Hi, I'm Context Lost. I'm an engineer on the physics team here at Roblox, and I wanted to quickly explain this new active property that we've added for joints. So the active property is a read-only bool property that we've added to all joint types. So joint instance, weld constraint, and constraint all have that. So basically anything that can be returned by base part get joints will have that property now. So the active property is true when the joint is enabled, if it has an enabled property and the joint itself and both of its parts are in workspace and the joint is activated in world. And that last part is always true for simulated joints, but it's a little more complicated for rigid joints and kinematic joints like weld, snap, weld constraint, and motor 6D. So a really quick example of this, I have two parts welded together with a manual weld and the weld keeps them locked together like this. If I have this other weld that I can put in a workspace that puts these parts in a slightly different configuration like this. See if I add both these welds to workspace. We obviously can't do both. These are kind of mutually exclusive, so we have to pick one. Um, and right now we break the tie based on the internal replicated GUID of the joint. So that's great because it's deterministic, it's consistent, but to you it's effectively random because we don't expose that. And so before you had no way to tell which joint we're picking, but now you do. You can look at the active property and you can kind of already tell visually which one it picked, but now I see the rotated configuration is active and the straight configuration is inactive. So I can actually delete this weld and nothing is gonna change. And this should be useful soon when we make the change to stop automatically removing redundant welds you won't need us to do it for you anymore because you'll have everything you need to do it yourself now. So we also have a similar thing that happens when you have a cycle. So we've got these four parts, they're welded in a loop, and we kind of have the same issue here because these welds could potentially have conflicting configurations and we can't always honor them all. So I've already enabled the debug visualization for the spanning tree, which is the system that picks roots and decides which welds we keep and which we ignore at any given time. So you can see here that there is no link between part one and part two here. We've actually dropped that weld. We're ignoring it to break the cycle here, to turn this arbitrary graph into a directed tree that we can actually use to position the parts as they move. So if I go and find the weld between part one and part two, you can see that the active property is false for it. Um, and if this in this game, I'm not supporting this model being like arbitrarily broken up, I can just delete this weld and nothing's gonna change. It's not contributing anything. Of course, uh, if you are supporting arbitrarily breaking this model up, you probably don't wanna delete that because it's like if I delete this part, you see now the link between those two parts has reappeared and the actor property is true for both the joints that are left. So you can use this to help you prune redundant welds in your models if your game is not trying to support arbitrary destruction. And that's it for now, but we'll have more cool things coming soon.